I was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, and it is an odd city. It is the biggest city in Florida and the 13th biggest city in the United States, but it basically has zero cultural cachet. Miami has half as many people and Orlando a third, but if you ask anyone to name a city in Florida, those are the two that are going to come up long before anyone mentions Jacksonville. If anything, the fact that Jacksonville is a big old nothing burger of a city has itself become what the city is known for. If you're a writer and you have a wacky, chaotic character that you want to inject some randomness into, then you invoke Jacksonville. Because the idea that anybody knows or cares about Jacksonville is just absurd. Jacksonville, Florida. It's everything I ever dreamed of. Oh my god, I haven't seen you since, Jacksonville. since uh, TGI Fridays. Fridays. You crashed your jet ski into a manatee? Yeah, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. It happens a lot. Even among the residents of this diverse city, we have a hard time uniting behind a symbol of our city's history and culture. We're named after a slave owner, our football team is a punchline, and the things we excel at are HIV transmission, murder, and COVID-19 infections. The closest thing to unique architecture that we have is a monorail, something that has been immortalized as a punchline in American culture thanks to The Simpsons. But there is one shining symbol of this city that we can all unite behind, an organic, homegrown monument that is so beloved it has survived for over half a century despite business closures, land ownership transfers, and even planned demolitions. Say hello to Rex, the beach boulevard dinosaur, the unofficial mascot of the nearly one million people of Jacksonville, Florida. Google lists him as a historical monument. Reddit uses him as the icon for our city. Local artists and artisans pay homage to him with everything from t-shirts to tattoos. He has stood watch over generations of Jacksonvillians, a dollop of wonder and delight in a wasteland of suburban sprawl. And he has a dark secret. Okay, maybe not that dark. But still, even if you're a resident of the River City, stay tuned, because I think you're going to learn a thing or two you didn't know about this unique symbol of our city. Rex was built in 1970 by a man named Dick Calvert. Dick owned Southeastern Pools, a local pool construction company, and he was contracted to build Rex and many other decorations for a mini golf course called Goody Golf. Even at the time, Rex stood out among the other Goody Golf decorations. Compared to the relatively mundane storybook figures like Mother Goose and the Mad Hatter, the 20-foot-tall T-Rex towered over the rest of the course, his bright orange paint drawing the eyes of anyone who drove by on Beach Boulevard. He was built on a welded metal frame with mesh and stucco skin, his scales hand-troweled by Dick. His legs and tail were filled with several tons of concrete to keep him stable and upright, even in the hurricane force winds that occasionally grace our fair city. And most impressively, his eyes would glow orange and his arm would rhythmically rise and fall, lifting a caveman on a string that would act as an obstacle on the mini golf course at its feet. Rex stood watch over Goody Golf for decades as the young and young at heart came and left, but the course's star began to fall in the 90s as Jacksonville experienced a surge of growth and newer, more contemporary attractions sprung up. The nail in the coffin was Adventure Landing, which opened in 1995. It was a hip, cool, pirate-themed 90s arcade that had all the amenities. Laser tag, go-karts, an animatronic band, a water park, batting cages, and a brand new mini golf course. I personally find a lot of charm in the old and amateurish Goonie golf decorations, but a lot of people found them to be tacky and dated, and as Adventure Landing siphoned off their customers, the mini golf course fell into disrepair. I was fortunate enough to get to go to Goody Golf as a child, and while I had a lot of fun, even as a kid I definitely recognized that the place was falling apart. The putting greens were all torn up, the paint was peeling, and there was rust and water spots everywhere. It just had this aura of quiet desperation that you can smell in a failing business, and it's not really a surprise that I only went there once to satisfy my curiosity about the big cool dino we would drive past, while Adventure Landing is still a place I'm happy to swing by, even if they replaced all the awesome pirate imagery with generic Dave & Buster's knockoff aesthetic. In 1999, Goonie Golf closed its doors. The abandoned golf course was left standing and became a popular target of teenage vandals. The smaller decorations were destroyed or stolen, but Rex stayed standing, gathering rust and graffiti tags as he decayed from the stuff of dreams to the stuff of nightmares. In 2006, the property's newest owners, Ash Properties, had announced that they were going to be bulldozing the old park and replacing it with a strip mall, and despite the years of neglect and disrepair, there was an immediate public outcry at the thought of losing the beloved landmark. In a rare and surprising instance of a land developer not being total human garbage, Ash Properties responded to the backlash by reassuring the people of Jacksonville that they would preserve Rex. Originally, they wanted to move him to a different location, but eventually they took the path of least resistance and just let him stay where he was. A volunteer group from the University of North Florida's Department of Building Construction restored and repaired Rex, and our local newspaper, the Florida Times Union, held a reader contest to vote on the official name for the dinosaur. Runners-up included... Jackson, T-Rex, 8th Wonder, J-Rex, 
Elvis, Jax Rex, King Ra, Dino Jag, Sunny Beach, and Sir Dino. But the winning name was Sexy Rexy, truly the Bodie McBoatface of its day. And Rex still stands to this day, but behind those glowing eyes hides a deep, dark secret. Rex is a ripoff. Yeah, as a longtime resident, it kind of blew my mind to find this out. You remember how the golf course was called Goody Golf? I always thought it was kind of a weird, clunky name, and it turns out that it has that name because it was a conspicuous attempt at ripping off Goofy Golf, a mini golf park in Panama City, Florida, that is largely credited as being the creator of the wacky, tacky, obstacle-laden novelty style of mini golf that we all know and love today. And once you know it, Goofy Golf also has a big orange T-Rex whose arm moves up and down, though theirs has a monkey instead of a caveman. The mini book of mini golf by Tim Hollis even includes side-by-side -side comparisons showing the family resemblance between Goofy Golf's original characters and Goonie Golf's knockoffs. And if that wasn't surprising enough, it also turns out that Rex isn't the only one of his kind. Goonie Golf was a franchise, and there were identical dinos all over the country. The company was founded in 1962 by Dutch McGrath and is still running as Amusement Products LLC, with multiple Goody Golf courses still in operation, including the original Chattanooga, Tennessee location. That's why they hired a pool builder to build Rex instead of an actual artist. He was a mass-produced decoration that was assembled on site rather than a bespoke piece of sculpture. There are clones of him in Tennessee, New York, Minnesota, and North Carolina. In a way, I feel like Rex's secret legacy makes him an even better fit for being Jacksonville's mascot. Jacksonville is a city composed almost entirely of suburban sprawl, just miles and miles of strip malls and mass-produced housing as far as the eye can see. Nobody really wants to live in Jacksonville, they just do so out of inertia or necessity. So what better symbol for the city than a piece of mass-produced cultural effluent that people have latched onto over the years for no reason other than the fact that it exists? Florida has a troubled future ahead of it thanks to climate change, but hopefully 50 years from now Rex will still be standing, even if he's underwater.